We think you should know that Imperfect Heroes Podcast is a production of Little Hearts Academy USA. Welcome, heroes and heroines, to episode 131 of Imperfect Heroes, Insights into Parenting, the perfect podcast for imperfect parents looking to find joy in their experience of raising children in an imperfect world. And I'm your host, DJ Stutz. Well, not only is this episode 131, it is also episode one of season four of our podcast. I'm so excited. So each of my seasons is a full year is how I run things. And so we're on season four. The only season that's an exception to that would be season one because we started that year in, I think it was June. And so it's got only the six months, but the other seasons are a full year. And so, yay! How exciting, and you're part of this. So I just want to thank everybody who's been part of sharing the word and telling their friends and coming back and listening. We're just having so much fun. We've made a few changes here and there, and there will be more changes to come, of course. But I just want to thank everyone who has been here and been a part of things of Imperfect Heroes and continue to help us grow. And if you want to get in on things and know about upcoming episodes and what's going on, you should be on our newsletter list. You can always get to it. It's on our website, the www.littleheartsacademyusa.com. And you'll just see, sign up for our newsletter and you'll be able to get it there. It doesn't cost a thing and you'll be informed on all of the cool stuff that we're doing. So this is actually being released on New Year's Day. Happy New Year's, everybody. And so it is January 1st, 2024. Oh my goodness. I just can't even relate that it is that far into 2024. It's just an amazing thing, guys. So let's get started. This is January 1st. And we're talking about resolutions. And when it comes to resolutions, some of us just give up. We don't even bother because we know that we'll try it for maybe a few months and then we just give up. Or maybe it's just a few weeks. Maybe it's just a few hours. And it's just, so why set myself up to fail? And then other people, they're going to start. They really try their best. They work hard. But those habits can be really hard to break and really hard to give up some things. And so even though we try our best, it just kind of fades off. And then there's those other stalwarts who are really on top of things and really use those resolutions to make their lives and the lives of their family or maybe their co-workers or whatever better. And so they use strategies and friends and they have their lives in order and they really make a difference in their lives and in the lives of others. Now, I don't know which category you fall into, but I know that depending on the air and depending on the resolution, I could fall in any of those categories. <laughs> but for me, it really depends on what the resolution is and what kind of support that I have to help me move along that encourages me and pushes me. And then how quickly am I able to see some level of success, right? I know some of the resolutions that I've made have taken me more than a year to get it done. I'll tell you what, the hardest one for me, and it did take uh, actually a couple of years, maybe even more than that, was I wanted to give up cursing, like all forms of cursing, all of it. Even the easy ones, even the little simple ones, done. And it took me over, yeah, over two years to get done. But I had some strategies and I didn't let my setbacks get me upset. And now I have actually over the most recent years become known as someone who doesn't curse at all. And so it set some people off. (laughs) Like, what? Not even that? Oh, not doing it, not doing it. And it probably doesn't bother a lot of people, some of those real easy little words. But 
it was something I wanted to set up for me, for my spiritual growth and for the person I wanted to be and to help me kind of calm down and to become kinder and to become more charitable and more loving. And I really felt like that would help me. And guess what? It has. So it was a good move for me. I know it's not for everyone, but it's one that took me a long time because it's so easy. You can't just throw your mouth out. <laughs> you can't just stop talking. And when something startles you, things come out. But now, even then, I haven't said a curse word in a long time. So that was just one of my little stories. Weirdo, I know. But that was one of the things that I know it took me longer. So if you realize that this might take a long time, but I can see little bits of success and growth and I can see it working, that makes it easier for you to keep with it. At least it has for me. So just some ideas on you. One of the keys to being successful and making a resolution is, is it something that's truly meaningful to you? Is it something that really touches your heart? right? And so if you have a parenting goal that you would like to work on this year, I would love to help you. I can bring some insight. I can help with some background information or some education on why things work or why you might want to work on this goal and help you see why it's important and then give you some strategies that might help. And I understand that one strategy that might work for one kid is not going to work for another kid. Nothing is one size fits all, not even pantyhose. And I can bring that knowledge and that sense of fun and engagement and no judgment. Everyone's trying. I'm never going to get upset. And so we're just going to have some fun. If you need an accountability partner, someone to talk to when I blew it, okay, let's see what happened. Tell me how you blew it what was going on, and I can really help you. I've helped several people, a lot of people, (laughs) and I've helped teachers and parents and grandparents and caregivers, and it's my favorite thing in the world to do. Honestly, I love it. So if you're interested in finding some help, I would love to help you. Everyone gets a free 50-minute discovery call, whatever you want to call it, so we can talk and maybe just have a quick question or wanted some insight on that. I am fine with that. But I love talking to people. It's just the highlight of my day when I have conversation with someone scheduled. That makes it always a lot better. So if you're interested, you can book me. Just go down to the show notes and my calendar book me um, link is down there and take advantage of it. All right. So with that being said, with all of the people that I've helped, including teachers, one of the most common things, issues that they come up with to me is why am I yelling? Why do I feel like I have to yell all the time? My kids won't listen to me if I don't yell. Or they just get so frustrated and angry or whatever and they yell at their kids and then they feel so bad about it and they want help with that. That's almost always, rarely is it not on their list. Almost always that's on somebody's list of things they'd like to work on as I'm trying to help out. So I thought I would talk to you a little bit about that today. So I don't want anyone to feel like they're a terrible parent because they have yelled at their kids. There's a ton of reasons for yelling at our kids. Some of them are really good reasons. Joey's running into the street. Please yell at your kid for him to stop. But if you want him to actually stop because you yelled, Joey, stop. It has to be a rare thing. If you are always yelling at your kid and you say, Joey, stop. It's like, oh, she's just yelling again. And he'll keep going. Do you understand, see the difference? If it's a rare thing, it's like, wait, she's yelling? And then it caught their attention because it's something different. It's going to be more effective if it's rare. And so that's a safety concern. It's a safety thing that it's going to be effective if it's rare. I said that already. I know. I know. But whatever. Okay. So sometimes we're just so frustrated. We're just exhausted. We've worked hard all day. Whether it's in an office or whether you're a mom or dad that is a home parent. 
it's hard work. It's all hard work. And we just get wiped out sometimes. And so sometimes you just feel like you're a terrible parent because why would I do that? Well, stop. Give yourself some grace and say, all right, tomorrow's going to be a better day. I'm going to take a few minutes here and I'm going to figure out why that happened. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but there are a lot of ways that we can help each other, that I can help you. You can help each other. You can help yourself to stop yelling. Bring the frequency, the the frequency as in volume, you know, and frequency as in how often you're yelling. So both of those frequencies, we're going to bring that down and make it more effective when it has to happen. Okay. All right. So I want you to think back to your own childhood and how many times did you just have just that warm, wonderful, loving memory that is included with people screaming at you, (laughs) right? I don't have it. I hated being yelled at. (laughs) I'll bet you did too. (laughs) And so I want you to think about how are you feeling when your mom, your dad, maybe a teacher, a grandparent an aunt or uncle, maybe a neighbor's parent, right? Or an older brother and sister, whatever, was yelling at you. Were you just feeling great? Was that just so much fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful times, right? Yeah, no. So your kids are feeling the same things that you felt when you were a kid. So stop and think about that for a minute. And then ask yourself, is that what I want my children to feel? Because they're probably feeling pretty close to the same things that you were feeling as a child. But my kids deserve it. (laughs) No more than you did. No more than you did. (laughs) So there we are. So one of the things that helps us to be successful in achieving any goal, honestly, is understanding why did I choose that goal? in the first place, right? Why did I think this was an important goal that I made it my resolution? Or it doesn't matter when we made the goal. If we made it in July, fine. But why did I choose this goal? Did I think that I would be happier if I met this goal? Maybe I want to lose weight so I would be better looking or get stronger, go to the gym. Maybe it'll make me more money if I can achieve this goal, right? Get some education, take some extra training or take on an extra assignment at work or whatever. Maybe I'll be healthier if I learn more about health and and how my body works and supplements or whatever. Um, Maybe I'll have better relationships if I learn more about connecting with people and some maybe some psychological things, right? Maybe I'll, I'll be more respected. We think about these kinds of things Why am I taking on this goal? And really have that why, that purpose in your head. And I would suggest that you write it down. Is this anything new? I'll bet you've heard this a hundred times. You know this. So let's look at why you might want to stop yelling at your kids. That might help. Well, it affects more than just the kids you're yelling at. We're going to talk about that, but just for a second, I want to talk about who else it's affecting when you're yelling at your kids. It affects you. There's a brain thing that's going on with you, but it's also affecting the people that are around you. So you may be yelling at one kid, but the other kids in the house are hearing it. They may put a pillow over their head. They may put headphones on and turn their game up or whatever. They may just kind of start singing to themselves to drown you out. They may feel concern for the child that's being yelled at. Um, It may make them feel unsafe in the situation. If you're in a grocery store or after school, you're doing pickup after school, and you see another parent yelling at their kid, right? Does that affect you? Does it trigger a stress response in you? It might. It might. So let's look at you then, at yourself. Yelling at your kid can actually trigger a stress response in you, the yeller. It can bring back memories. 
It can heighten your stress. You've had a tough day at work. You got yelled at by your boss because you're not feeling that calm. That's going to help you think things through more clearly. It's not going to do, it's just amping things up even more and it's making things worse. So it can do that. Um, it can lead to negative beliefs about yourself that I'm not in control. I'm not this low self-esteem, low self-worth. It can trigger all of those things within yourself because you're yelling at a little kid. Think about what it's done to the little kid. Negative self-beliefs, <laughs> low self-esteem, low self-worth, right? It's feeding those same things into the child. It's feeding the same things into you. Not very positive, right? It also teaches your kids. Remember my story about three-year-old Debbie in the grocery store? And it teaches them, I don't have to listen. It's, that's not her mad voice. I don't have to listen. She's not yelling. Is that what we want to teach them? Or do we want to teach them that even though I'm not yelling, you need to take me seriously? So one of the funnest things that happened when I was teaching, gosh, it was probably 10, more than 10 years ago, but I had a class and it was a very noisy class. It was inner city, a very rough class with rough behaviors. I had one little girl in fact, I found some pictures of her as so I was scrolling through my phone uh, a couple of days ago, and I love that kid. But anyway, I would get quieter. If the class was getting noisy and I needed them to come sit down or whatever, I would actually get quieter. And I would go around the room and say, Joey, you need to come sit at the carpet. Susie, come sit at the carpet, okay? And I'd go around, and, and instead of saying, come sit at the carpet, right? Susie, come on, come sit down. Jamie, come on, we're gonna sit down at the carpet. And then some of the kids, would they would just come and sit down. And then I would go sit down and we would start playing a game or singing a song or whatever. One day, I had some kids that weren't listening and some kids that were. And so we were over and I'm just whispering to them and I'm talking to them about something that we were going to do. And one little girl, stood up and turned around and she said, guys, she's whispering. She is really, really mad. Whoops. <laughs> oh, that cracked me up. <laughs> she's whispering. She's really, really mad. <laughs> made my day. It just made my day. But wouldn't that be a fun thing for your kids to say? Oh, she's whispering. We better go. <laughs> anyway. Wouldn't that be a better thing for them to learn is also to listen more clearly for what people are saying and notice things about other people. When we yell at kids, think about how we feel after we've yelled at some kids, at our kids especially. How we feel after will often depend on their reaction to what we're doing. Well, how are we going to react if they get up and just do what they're told? Oh, good. They're finally doing it right? We're not going to feel quite so bad about <laughs> yelling if they just get up and do it. What if they yell back at us? How's that going to affect how we feel about the situation? What if they look startled up at us and then they look full of fear? They look fearful. Oh, it's going to break my heart. What if they completely ignore us? Am I saying any, are the words coming out of my mouth? Am I imagining this? That might make me matter, right? Is yelling always bad? Should we never yell at our kids? No, that's silliness. That's just silliness. When is one of the good times to yell? Well, when they're in danger, right? When they're getting ready to run into the street, when <laughs> they've climbed up on top of the counter and then they've managed to get up on the fridge because they're trying to reach the cookies and you're worried they're gonna fall. You might, but you don't wanna yell too much there because what if you startled them and then they fell because you startled them? But there are times when they're in danger. Maybe they're going up to a vicious animal, right? Or maybe uh, they're heading toward a creek and you know you're not going to be able to get to them in time. And they don't know how to swim or whatever. Those dangerous situations, yes, we're going to raise our voice. But because we rarely do, now they're going to listen to us. But oftentimes, we just yell because we're late. Or how about this one? 
I'm finally sitting on the couch and I am watching my show. Mom, I need you. What? I just sat down. Mom, come here. Ah, no, you come here. Come. I'm not getting that. We can argue with them for five or ten minutes. Or you can get up, manage it in 30 seconds, and come right back. There's an amazing thing on our remotes now called pause. <laughs> it's <a> fabulous, <laughs> right? Okay, so you could use some of that. And yes, it's a pain in the butt to get up and go. I just sat down. They're not going to be this age for long. They're not going to need you for much longer. And you're going to wish for those times. You're going to miss those times when they would say, Mom, come help me. It's not that long. I promise it isn't. Trust me, it isn't, right? What if we're just trying to get something done? We're trying to get something done. I got to get this done. Dinner's going to burn. Hey, you know what? Come here. Come and, and help me with this. And when I'm done, let's go help you. Maybe we could do something like that. And engage them with what we're trying to get done. And now it's not competing, now we're working together. What if we're just tired of a common behavior? Why are you always getting into the meow, meow, meow? Why are you always picking on your brother? Why are you always getting into your sister's things? I'm tired of it. I'm done. I'm just tired of it. So I'm going to yell at you and make me feel better. Okay? Maybe they're just not moving fast enough. Because, you know, those little foot and a half long legs... <laughs> can't move as fast as our big long ones can and so we get frustrated with them you know and maybe we're just fixing the car or, or talking on the phone or trying to get that laundry done or whatever and we're engaged in a different activity and so we'll just yell at them to just handle it just handle it get out I can't I'm I've got to get this done go take care of it all right so let's think about what is communicated in the tone of our voice. So we've got the volume, we've got the tone, we've got the words we use. I have heard parents actually call their children monsters in front of the child. Please don't do that. Please don't do that because they will believe you. And you have them created the very thing you didn't want to create. There's the body language. We don't even have to yell. We're screaming with our body language very often. There are some things. So there are things that happen within our kids' brains when we're yelling at them, especially when we're yelling frequently, right? So they develop this stress state of mind. And so they're thinking, ooh, am I safe here? Did you know that your brain checks for safety, am I safe, five times a second and that's for adults and kids. We're always checking for safety. And so if a kid is not feeling safe a lot of the time, oh, I've never hit him. You've hit them with some really tough words. And that constant screaming and yelling connotes a lack of safety. In fact, that's one of the things that they will use with prisoners of war is they will put loud music and play it 24-7. And so they don't get a full sleep or whatever. But that constant loud music, they get in this stressed out fight or flight and it doesn't go away because their mind is telling them because of that constant loud music that they are not safe. And so you get what wind up with kids who are always... They may not show it so much, but their bodies and their minds are always judging the temperature of the room, the emotional temperature of the room, if that makes sense. And so they're trying to see, okay, that guy looks like he could blow any minute. This guy looks pretty calm. I might stand by him a little more. And so they're always on edge. They're always on edge. I've seen kids like this every year. Every year I taught, I had kids, several kids like that in my class. It inhibits their ability to grow socially and emotionally, to identify their own feelings, because the one that they have the most is fear. And so what some of them will do will just turn off their emotions. They'll turn them off because their emotions are uncomfortable. Or it'll accelerate them and they're crying and whining and they're angry all the time. 
They can do either one. So I want you to think about your kids. Are you seeing any of these signs in them? It inhibits their positive and normal attachments. So some kids will not attach to anybody because I never know when you're going to blow. Uh, so, mm, yeah, you go do you. I'll just play safely and solitarily <laughs> over here. Or you'll see little kids that will just run up to any adult and want to sit by them or sit on them sometimes. And all of a sudden, you're my best friend, you're my best friend. Because that adult seems safe. And they are raving that feeling of being safe around an adult. They might have negative outlooks on life. Everything is, yeah, well... It's going to get broken. Well, this is bad. They're always seeing the negative of things. Sometimes they'll on purpose break something because it's going to break eventually. Let's just get it over with. Because my mom told me I always break things. Why are you always breaking everything? Everything you touch is always broken. Well, my mom knows everything. She's the one who loves me. She must know. So I guess I break everything. Right? The words we use are just so important. They are so important. And so when we use words like, how many times do I have to tell you? Oh, gosh. I can't believe you did this again. Just go to your room. I can't. I can't even. Go to your room. And then, of course, you know, you're such a monster. You hit what you're hitting all the time. Okay. I had one little boy in one of my classes many years ago, and we were having a talk. He'd misbehaved in class, and I said, Buddy, I know you're a good kid. You have a good heart. He lost it. He lost it. I am not a good kid. I am a bad kid. Because that's what he had been told. You're such a bad kid. Why are you such a bad kid? You're always in trouble. We had to take a different route. I couldn't say that he was a good kid. We had to find good traits about him. That's a whole other story I won't go into, but we had to take a whole different route. This is a kindergartner and had been told that he was a bad kid. So that's how he related. He was a bad kid. Have you ever been around someone who just cannot take a compliment? You look nice today. Oh gosh, this is such an old dress. Oh, my hair wouldn't go right. Oh, right? They, They always have to demean themselves when someone gives them a compliment. Or they always put the needs of others in front of theirs, which can be nice, right? And that's nice to do. But all the time, even if they really need something, they'll back off and do without because somehow they're not as good. Is that what we want? Is that what we want? Okay. Do we want our kids to learn that it's okay to yell and say mean things when you're mad? Well, I was mad. Why would you say that? I was mad. Okay. Are they learning that it's okay to yell And say these mean things in future relationships. So when they're a husband or a wife or a parent, is that what we want to teach them to do? Because that's what they're learning when they're in a yelling household. All right. So we've talked about all of these reasons that you might want to choose this as a resolution or something just to work on. But now I need to ask you, are you actually ready to do the work? Willing to make some changes because that's where the rubber hits the road. I've worked with a lot of parents who, yes, I just have to stop the yelling. And we'll give them even some simple things to do, simple tasks to do to get ready. And yeah, I was busy or, you know, I was just so tired or whatever. And okay, so I can see that maybe you're not ready for this one. Let's move on to a different goal for right now. Because this one, you're not ready. So you have to really decide, am I ready to make these changes? Sometimes you just get in your head and you just say, you know what? It's too hard. But for me with the cursing, sometimes it would be like, it's so like, it just comes out. (laughs) It just comes out. I didn't mean to do that. Why is it? You know, everybody else does it around me. Why am I making a big deal out of this? It's just part of life. Well, I did finally beat it, but it was a hard, long haul. And are you ready to say, I'm in it for the haul? If you are, and you're ready to admit, yeah, I'm gonna have some back steps, and yeah, 
I am going to need to make a few apologies here and there. And I'm going to have to do some self-assessment. Sometimes that self-assessment is really hard to do. But if you're truly ready, then you're ready to move forward. Okay. So this is the kind of stuff that I help parents work through to talk about and talk about the whys and to get into maybe some of the, yeah, it's hard. Let's talk about why it's hard. What are some of the things that are triggering you? What are some of the things that are making it hard? I can help with that. That's what I do. Anyway, let me just give you a few tips to get you started. Okay, here we go. First off, it might be an interesting conversation depending on how old your kids are. Ask your kids what you sound like when you yell. Let them do a little role play. That's going to be an eye opener. (laughs) And it sounds a little scary, but it can be super funny too. And it just depends on the attitude that you go into it with, right? And so that's kind of a fun thing. If you're not quite ready for that, Maybe you just want to listen in as they are talking to their friends or maybe their siblings or playing with their dolls or their toys. How do they talk to their dolls and their toys and stuff? You're going to hear it. You're going to hear yourself. Another thing you can do is talk to their teachers and ask if they're yelling at their classmates or if they're yelling in the classroom or on the playground. How are they sounding? So those are some places you can go to kind of see if your kids are picking up on the yelling themselves. Another thing, I'm a teacher. I'm a data gatherer. (laughs) I really believe in the power of data. So one of the very first things that I would do is take a week or so and just have a paper, even if it's just uh, like a sticky note like this. And I would just maybe write a check. That's all. When you catch yourself yelling... Just make a check. And you can put down like one sticky note for one each day. And so you're catching yourself. How often am I honestly yelling at my kids? Okay. And then if you want to, you can allow your spouse or even you can allow your kids to say, Mom, you're yelling at me. Ooh, I need to mark that down. Thank you for telling me. When you take that attitude with it, It's going to change the whole atmosphere of things. People are going to realize you're actually serious about this. And then they're going to get behind you to help you. It's an amazing thing that happens. It's kind of fun. But you have to have that attitude. Instead of like, why are you telling me I'm yelling? And if you get mad at them. (laughs) Can you see the irony of that? But (laughs) if you get mad at them for telling you that you're yelling could be problematic. (laughs) Maybe you need to take a few breaths. Yes. So anyway, and sometimes, and I've done this, I've done this. I've improved so much in the last few years, like 15, 20 years. I've done a lot of improvement, but catching yourself. And, but even now when I'm super passionate about something, I won't tell you the topics that I get super passionate about, but (laughs) all of a sudden I'll have to stop. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm yelling. (laughs) When did that start? (laughs) And I'll look at like my friends or my family or whomever. I'm like, I'm I'm yelling. And they're like, yep. (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) How long have I been yelling? (laughs) And they'll just laugh. And I'm like, okay, I got to take a breath. Sorry, guys. (laughs) (laughs) gotta take a breath I'm gonna go get a drink water (laughs) but it's okay and that's actually quite endearing (laughs) when you do that but as soon as you catch yourself even if you are right and you are trying to make a point (laughs) you're not making any points when you're yelling just saying nobody's learning anything when you're yelling and so take a breath but when you do that and you say oh my gosh oh I didn't realize I was yelling and you step back you say Hold on, man. I'm so sorry. I had no idea that I was yelling, but now I recognize it. And so I am going to go get a drink. We'll pick this up, but sorry. And even if they're yelling at you back, I wouldn't even bring that up because you're taking care of you. And when they start seeing that you're making that difference in you, you're going to start seeing some differences in them. Just saying. So as soon as you catch yourself, start doing those things. And then set yourself up for some success. If you know 
that you tend to yell at your children in the morning as you're trying to get out the door. Maybe get up even just 15 minutes earlier so that you are closer to being dressed before you guys have to leave. Then you have more time. You can help them more. A lot of times the reason kids will dally in the morning, especially our little young guys that we talk about here, is they just want more time with you. They want to spend time. They want to talk with you. They don't want to leave you. Isn't that lovely? So think of it as that, like, oh, that's so sweet. So set it up so that you can have a little more time in the morning. Go to bed a little bit earlier, whatever. But find some things that you can do to set yourself up for success. Plan ahead. Maybe make the lunches the night before or pack their backpacks the night before. So all you have to do is grab them and go. I've had some parents that they don't care about clothes being ironed and nicely pressed or whatever. Most people don't anymore. So why not let them sleep in the clothes they're going to wear to school? (laughs) Great. Let's go brush your teeth. Now think of how much time you would save, right? And their lunches are packed and their backpacks are ready to go. You've got some time to snuggle and giggle and tickle and read a story or whatever it is. And so come up with some ideas on how you can set yourself up for success. I've got plenty of them, just letting you know. And then, this might sound a little goofy, but look in the mirror. Practice the calm things that you want to say when things are getting a little noisy. Maybe the kids are arguing with one another and you are done. You are done. Why are you always arguing? Well, they don't know why. Because he looked at me funny. He almost touched me. (laughs) Right? Nee, 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 nee. I have five brothers. I know all about that. What is it that you want to say in a calm manner? Look in the mirror. Practice saying the words. Practice it. And it will eventually come out in a nice way. Set yourself up for a success, right? And then make it fun. One of my things I did is if your kids are arguing with each other and instead of going in and adding to the chaos by adding to the yelling, oh, let's have one more person yelling. That'll certainly calm things down, right? No, put a pot on your head. Put, I don't know, put something ridiculous on your head. Put a pair of the kids' underwear. I don't care. And put on your head and then just go in the room and start vacuuming or dusting or whatever. Don't say a word to them. And they're like, what is she doing? You've distracted them. It's all calming down. And you're silly and you're fun. Mom, what have you got in your head? Hair? I don't know. What? What? (laughs) Okay, now you've totally distracted them. And you've made it fun. And you've turned things around. So come up with some other ideas of things that you can do. Instead of yelling. Instead of adding to the chaos. Adding to the anger. Right? Okay. You don't want to be teaching those things that you don't want to teach, right? Okay. So if you do want some more ideas on how to manage yelling or any other parenting strategies, just remember, I am always here. You can always contact me and sign up for that free discovery call. And if you haven't signed up for my newsletter yet, go ahead. You can find that on the website. The link is in the show notes. And be sure to hit that follow button to make sure you're getting in on all of the amazing episodes that we have each week. And I've got so many people wanting to get on the podcast. I actually have enough guests lined up to get me into May. I know. Exciting, huh? I know. We're a good group. So tell your friends, share, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's Little Hearts Academy or Imperfect Heroes. There's pages for both. DJ Stutz on LinkedIn, but go ahead and follow. And I've got YouTube, Little Hearts Academy USA. I've got Rumble. It's just Imperfect Heroes. And so be sure and subscribe if you're there. If you're watching me on that right now, just hit the button. Just let you go boop, like like that. And it works. Boop. And it's done. And then you're following us and it makes things great. And if you liked what you heard in today's podcast, please be sure to rate and leave a review or 
please tell a friend and it's so easy and it really does help us out and so i love it next week i have a guest and i am talking with melinda mulcahy isn't that a great name and we're talking about building curiosity in our kids a curious kid is an amazing kid and we want them to have that curiosity so check it out and see and until next time let's find joy in parenting see you guys <music>